And welcome to uh, Fireside Chat with Jerry Baldwin uh, from Draper University. So I'm Joe, I'm one of the program managers here at Draper University. And as Pedram stated, uh, Jerry is one of the co-founders of Starbucks and uh, later on the president of Pete's Coffee and then Jerry Baldwin Winery. Uh, so Jerry, nice to have you here tonight. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Good to be here. Um, so to start with, I kind of wanted to frame the talk. And to do that, I have a quote from Jerry uh, right above us. And that quote is, uh, it really helps if you're doing something you love instead of something you're spending a bunch of money on. You can become very discouraged if you're not involved in something genuine, something that you believe in, something that you're committed to. Uh, and why I wanted to frame the talk with that is uh, passion. So Jerry has a great passion for coffee and he followed his passion uh, eventually into a business, which I hope a lot of you guys are getting into a business that you truly, truly care about, because as you can see, it helps. So uh, before we begin, begin, as a coffee enthusiast and someone who's passionate about it, uh, could you just give us a history of kind of where coffee came from? Sure. Well, I don't remember saying that, but I believe <laughs> it. <laughs> um, well, coffee, um, I haven't given the history in a long time. It was, there are lots of uh, legends about uh, how it was discovered. Uh, the most common is that uh, a Yemenese monk uh, noticed that his goats were particularly energetic after eating the leaves of this plant and then started to look at the fruit and over centuries really, I mean this is, one source has that at about uh, the year 600 um, and the first discovery that I'm aware of of anyone roasting coffee beans found in archaeological digs is about the year 1000. And th this was in Yemen. And there's some Ethiopians who claim that uh, Kofi Arabica was originated in Ethiopia, but I think today everyone agrees that it started in Yemen. So it began to be, to be traded uh, but carefully because uh, exporting beans from Yemen um, was a capital offense. And this was true of wow. a lot of uh, coffee propagation. It, it became so popular in Europe over, thank you for drinking that Pete's coffee, I see that cup, um, <clears throat> that it was, it was very expensive in Europe um, and so it was, uh, it was protected. And it spread from Yemen. It came into Europe, you know, variously, late 1500s, 1580, into um, uh, into Venice. And uh, the Turks, actually, who were drinking coffee in the 1500s, are said to have left a bag. This is another story of the propagation at the gate to Vienna. When they were unsuccessful in the siege of Vienna, uh, there was some coffee left when they retreated. And uh, this Polish guy said, I know what to do with this, roasted the coffee, and then we started the, the coffee houses in Vienna, which of course are mm. famous to this day. Went to England. Uh, the, the propagation of, of the plant itself you know, was uh, bit by bit. There's another great story about a, uh, a French uh, seaman who protected his plant and fed it half of his water ration while he sailed from France to Martinique and planted it there and it became the, the, the Caribbean coffee. Napoleon had it planted in Paris, not successfully, and uh, the Dutch took it to Indonesia, uh, this is early 1600s. Um, so through, through the Caribbean, uh, you know, through the Pacific into, in, into Indonesia. It's grown tropically it really isn't very good, uh, Kona fans notwithstanding, uh, in my opinion, above like 12 or 15 degrees uh, north and south latitude. And altitude does help. No, I'll leave it at that. We can go on. For oh, yeah. It sounds like you know. <laughs> it's a big subject. Oh, yeah, the long history of coffee. Um, well, eventually it landed here in the U.S. And then to kind of frame the time that you were growing up in, were your parents coffee drinkers? Yes, for a while. Then it was fashionable to have an ulcer, um, <laughs> which they developed, and then they drank tea. <laughs> but do you remember uh, the first time you had coffee? 
I'm sorry? Do you remember your first ever well, cup Well, I remember of the first uh, cup my father was picking me up from after a basketball game uh, as a freshman or sophomore in high school. And uh, so I went into a diner and had a cup of coffee, loaded it up with cream and sugar. It was really awful. I mean, I have no idea whether it was a good cup of coffee and I didn't like it or it was a terrible cup of coffee and I didn't like it. But after I got to college, I started to drink it and went on from there. Yeah. And I recently had my DNA done, and it said, well, one of the things that it said is you probably have a, a, a high tolerance for caffeine and like coffee. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but now that you you mentioned college, so in college um, and growing up, did you have aspirations that you would ever start a business or? No, uh, I really thought, I mean, my father was a milkman. Uh, I delivered milk door to door. My aspirations were modest. Um, I thought I would end up as, you know, I was a, a, in college I was a mail boy at uh, Crown Zellerback, which was a big paper company. And so there were, you know, I don't know, six or eight floors of people uh, pushing paper. And I thought I'd probably end up in there someday. Um, but, you know, I, as I described to you on the phone, I feel like I'm an accidental entrepreneur. A lot of entrepreneurs are accidental entrepreneurs. When we started, uh, and we didn't, I wasn't even aware of this, there were four schools of entrepreneurship in the United States. When you started Starbucks? Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, University of Texas at Austin, Michigan State, and two others I can't recall. And then just like a great cup of coffee, starting a business generally is great with friends. And so you started a business with this business with three friends. Yes. Uh, and we're going to talk about each one of them. So the first one, actually, oh, that's what was supposed <laughs> to be up there when we were talking about your cup, first cup of coffee. Yes. Um, it was Gordon. Uh, so how did you meet Gordon? Well, uh, Gordon and I were uh, started to be roommates in our sophomore year of college, and over the years, we're roommates in lots of different places. You know, until. We moved on in life. He's a very good friend. Roommates in Talk college? To him regularly. Do you remember the first time you met him? Like what your first impression well, of him was? Well, not the first time I met him, but um, we, we, neither of us had. Uh, we went to University of San Francisco, and at the time we were required to live in the dorm. Mm -hmm. And until, I don't know, whatever. And we, said, we both said the same thing independently that, well, if you have to do it, why bother with the deposit? You know, I'll pay you when I get there. Yeah. And then that year, our sophomore year, it was, the dorm was full. Oh, damn. Uh, so we had to get an apartment. And, um, Got it. And we were just standing there in the, uh, in the lobby of the, the dormitory saying, well, want to get an apartment? Sure. And what type of guy was he? Was he a, is he a friendly guy? What type of guy is Gordon? Gordon? Oh, yeah, yeah. very uh, smart. You know, speaking of entrepreneurs, uh, Red Hook Ale, uh, fallen on hard times, but that was his idea, and he started at Starbucks, a, a advertising firm that was really successful in the Northwest. Uh, his partner produced the first and second Starbucks logos, the Pete's logo, although it's morphed since then, mm -hmm. and lots of others. And then, so you two were roommates in college, and then you guys at one point met Zev. Zev, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now, Gordon met Zev at the Seattle World's Fair in, I don't know, whatever year that was. And at a certain point during college, they were both taking a year off to go to Europe. And Gordon saw the ad on a bulletin board, you know, driving to the East Coast, um, want to share a ride. So they signed up, and we've been friends ever since. You rode with them along the well, East Coast? Well, I did not, but uh, on their way west, uh, they came to uh, San Francisco. And I stayed in school. Uh, I met Zev then, and then later on. And, and what type of personality was he? Did you guys, all three of you, have complementary kind of personalities? That was that, that's one of the that's one of the things we did right without even knowing it. Is that we weren't we didn't duplicate each other's skills, and there's no no substitute for having uh, complementary skills, talents, and interest uh, when you're building a team. You know, don't build. You know, this is, it should be obvious. It's not always. But, you know, get compliments, not clones. Um, and so I'm assuming the three of you got along very well. Uh, uh, well, yes. Although I will say that when we started the business, we each had strong opinions. 
and we express them strongly, forcefully, and sometimes at high volume. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> and, uh, but we always resolved that, and once a decision was made, there was, we just got on with it. But there were heated discussions.